20 years after the Rwanda genocide vigils were held around the world in the Canadian capital, Ottawa, about 300 people marched silently through the streets to remember the dead. CCTV's Christian Yeo has been speaking to one survivor. I never planned to be, uh, to escape for forever. I say, let me escape today, probably uh, I'll die tomorrow. And, uh, uh, and that's what we were doing, because you couldn't know what's going to happen even in a few hours. Alain Nawali was 10 years old when Hutu militia invaded his home in the Rwandan capital, Kigali, on April the 8th, 1994. That's my dad. His father was a prominent businessman and an ethnic Tutsi. They had a list of uh, uh, people who had to be killed, and my dad was the second on that list. So we could hear from the radio uh, the name of my dad uh, to be, he have to be killed. With the city on lockdown, Tutsis were sitting ducks awaiting slaughter. Elaine remembers that terrifying wait and the moment militia attacked his home. When uh, the fence was about to fall down, my dad told us, uh, my brothers and I say, uh, run. The last word he said, it's, uh, uh, be, be a good man, uh, be a good man. Elaine and his brothers escaped and spent the following days fleeing from house to house. Nowhere was safe for long. The United Nations set up guarded shelters, but after 10 Belgian soldiers were killed, they withdrew, leaving the Tutsis exposed. It was tough for them at that time, but they had a chance to save more people if they could stay uh, even for a month. Rwanda may now be on the path to stability, but Elaine warns that events unfolding to the south in neighboring Burundi are all too familiar. I saw some uh, report in UN saying that in Burundi uh, the government are giving weapons to uh, Hutu militians. I say, okay, this is a deja vu. Uh, this happened in Rwanda 20 years ago. Uh, the, the report is there, but where's the reaction? They are not doing anything for now. Just reading reports and reports. Elaine moved to Canada in 2005. With a wife, young daughter, and a career in accounting in his sights, life is very different. He hopes his father would be proud. But making sense of his past is an ongoing struggle, and the gravity of what happened in Rwanda weighs heavier with time. Bearing witness to such carnage, he's beset by fear that history may one day repeat itself. If the war uh, doesn't do anything, if you don't do anything, this can happen again. Christian Yeo, CCTV, Ottawa.